Hello, I'm Samantha Almond Delawoy, and we are talking about innovation at Maersk. And I'm here with Soren Sko, our CEO, and Navneet Kapoor, our CTIO. And uh, this discussion will be about grassroots innovation and also tech trends coming up in the industry. So with that in mind, we'll open up with what would you consider is the biggest game changer in innovation in recent years? I don't know, Navneet, do you want to answer this first? Sure, hi, S hi Sam, morning, hi everyone. Yeah, look, uh, technology has been uh, at the helm of uh, driving tremendous innovation over the last couple of decades. And uh, there have been, I think, in my mind, uh, two big changes that have really disrupted uh, how we connect, how we shop, how we interact, how we go about living our lives. And really, that's the advent of the Internet and then the continual decrease in computing cost and storage cost. And what that's allowed us to do is really bring people from all over the world together. So today, if you want to do business in any part of the world, you don't have to have a physical presence there. You can reach out through the internet. And because compute and storage has come, cost has come down so much, you can today store unbelievable quantities of data, which then allows uh, you to build artificial intelligence or machine learning models on that that can solve problems that would have taken humans you know, months and months and lots of time to do. So in my mind, those are the two biggest disruptions that continue to then play out in various ways and have spawned off more innovation on top, like I said, around artificial intelligence or machine learning or self-driving cars or solving problems for humanity uh, that would have been hard to solve in the past. Well, that's a great answer. And Soren, what would you have to add on that? Well, I think this, the, the, the development that Namnit just described actually has profound consequences for us as a co company and the way we think about uh, technology. Not long ago, we thought about technology as kind of like the Indian room that keeps everything going. Now, technology is really a, a, an integrated part of our strategy and how we're building a sustainable competitive advantage. And in particular, when it comes to uh, the way we transact and engage with our uh, customers, digital and what we are do, doing on, on, on MERS.com uh, is really uh, accelerating our uh, strategy and, and, and clearly changing the way we think about uh, creating value for our customers. Well, that's great because that does lead me on to innovation at MERSC. What does it mean for us as a company and what is the uh, results, the input for our customers? Maybe I can start uh, at, 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 the, at the high level. We have, uh, we, we have a, a, a number of different areas we focus on. One is, is the customer engagement, uh, the way we, we uh, interact with our customers, how easy and simple it is for our customers to b do business with us, the visibility we provide and, and so on. Another area is how we run the company. Uh, so how we run our machines, if you will, our ships, our ports, our containers that are connected to the internet, uh, how we provide digital tools and automation to, to be more efficient, uh, and then how we run the uh, company in terms of, of, of processes. Uh, so we are modernizing our legacy technology estate to, to be more efficient, to automate, be faster, be instant. Um, and then the, the final uh, piece is really about thinking about whole new ways of creating uh, value and, and, and revenue. And, and we have projects like, uh, like Trade Lens where, where we're trying to, if you will, do away with the paper in global trade and, and to create a whole new level of, of visibility both to physical movement and to, to, to documents. Yeah, uh, let me build upon uh, what Soren said so clearly the opportunity at MERS to use technology is multifold, and we just heard Soren talk about it. And then it's also about harnessing the, the power of our, our colleagues around the world. We want to make sure that uh, you know, we, we're able to tap into all the great ideas that are out there across 80 plus thousand employees that we have. And uh, we, we believe that if we have a mechanism to channel that and en enable that the right conversations around innovation, enable ideas to be fleshed up, and, and then we do something about it and make it part of our mainstream work, it's hugely powerful. So those are the areas we focused on as well in terms of enabling the outcomes we just heard about. Well, you just touched upon our employees. So how are we fostering this grassroots innovation at uh, Culture at Musk? Yes, I think they're doing it in multiple ways. Um, 
we of course want to make sure that it's, uh, we have a culture that allows for open conversation, collaboration, debate, um, co-creation. But also we you know, recently rolled out a more formal structure, we call it the MERSC Hackathon, the Global Hackathon, where we uh, asked our employees to come up with ideas across a set of themes and uh, build a prototype or a small hack or uh, just a proof of concept in about 15 days. And we got some tremendous response. And that's just a start towards a more sustainable uh, and structured way to, to tap into this uh, unbelievable energy we have across the company. So you tease us a little bit with the hackathon. Could you tell us uh, it was a global event, how many entries you had, or even some of the types of submissions that you had? Yeah, so it, 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 it was a global event. We opened it to everyone in the company, and we got a tremendous response, 670 team members or employees responded to that. We had 235 video submissions of ideas in just a couple of weeks of work. We had participation from over 100 countries. We had um, seafarers coming up with ideas, our frontline teams, our sales colleagues, our colleagues in commercial and technology organizations. It was just unbelievable to see that kind of passion. And it was a tough time uh, working through those ideas and sifting the top five. But, uh, and, and the ideas range from uh, things that we could do here and now to impact our core business, impact our customer experience, or impact the operations of the company, but also some more out there, big, big, big ideas that could really fundamentally add to the revenue streams across the company. Perhaps I can add to, 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 to that. I mean, I had the pleasure of being one of the, the, the judges uh, uh, of, of the hackathon, and it was a it was just amazing to see the creativity. It was really hard to decide. Um, but, but I wanted to add another point, which was that uh, Namneet in, in, uh, is, is building uh, in his team a what we call an engineering uh, culture. And, and by that, we basically mean that we are inverting the, the, uh, the, the pyramid in the organization so that in technology, it's really the, the engineers that is driving us uh, forward more than it's, it's the managers. And that's actually also a way of uh, of creating uh, more innovation in the company because it exposes, if you will, the, the young uh, and creative engineers directly to, to, uh, to, to top management. And then when we see, see a good, good idea that we really think has potential and can scale, then we can also make things happen much faster. And I think that's, that's a super powerful uh, uh, way of doing things for us. Well, it's great to hear that backing. So would you say then, does that require a different kind of leadership in terms of attracting and retaining tech talent? Yeah, uh, you know, look, we, we are trying to bring the tech back in the technology organization and make it about problem solving, about creation, about uh, uh, co-development, co uh, a stronger collaboration between our colleagues in the business functions and in technology. And then that requires a different leadership mindset that, that is there to, in fact, enable the engineers and, and the architects and the designers to work more closely with our business colleagues and, and, and drive uh, great value for the company. So in some sense, uh, to the point Soren made, it's about inverting this, the so-called organizational pyramid. And the role of the leader then is of a servant leader to, to enable the teams to remove the roadblocks, but also get out of the way where, when they don't need to be in the way. And, and, and that re requires uh, you know, spending time on different kind of things that perhaps we may have spent time on, less on administrative aspects and more on fostering this, uh, this, this new ways of working, building this culture for the future. It's, it's a tough way to work for, for the leaders in the sense that they have to be willing to give up some of the camp command and control that, that, uh, that, that we have been used to and, and many of us, certainly in my generation, has, has grown up uh, expecting as a leader that your key role is to take the decisions. But here we are really trying to push the decisions to the level in the organization where they're best uh, taken. Of course, within themes and objectives or things we want to achieve, but the, the leadership role is m more about coaching. Uh, it's more about figuring out exactly when to get out of the way and, and to let uh, the, the engineers together with the, the relevant people in the business take the decisions that move us forward. 
Well, this is great to hear, and it also echoes uh, when speaking to some of our colleagues. A lot of them talk about the pace of change that is happening at Maersk at the moment, and there's a lot of energy in the company. Is this one of the ways that you're also trying to attract um, diversity in thought, um, diversity within uh, the tech uh, talent that we have, and also others outside who are looking in at Maersk? You know, what do you want them to, to see, uh, what they could be a part of, the opportunities that exist in our company? I, I believe as a company, uh, we have some pretty interesting problems to solve in terms of uh, the role we have in, 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 in facilitating a global trade and in making global trade more efficient, basically enabling our customers to sell their goods in any, 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 any place in the world that is relevant for them and for, for those of our customers that are importers to buy from the best suppliers in the world and, and, and get their goods uh, back home in, a, in, in an efficient, efficient way. There's plenty of things to do. Uh, we are also a company, of course, in the nature uh, of things that are uh, super global. Uh, we are in pretty much every country in the world, uh, and that in itself makes our organization diverse. Uh, and we certainly wanna, uh, we want to make sure that we match our customers uh, in, in, in any shape or form. So, so those, those, uh, those are some of the things that people are attracted to when they come to work for Musk. But of course, they also want to have impact. They don't just want to know we have interesting problems to solve. They also want to see that, that they are part of creating the solutions to these uh, problems. And that is very much about inverting the, the pyramid. Yeah, and I'll just build upon what Soren said. I mean, we are by design a diverse company, but we also very strongly believe that you know, diverse, diverse teams are more impactful and there's enough data to show that. So it's not just a box we want to take, it's something we fundamentally believe in. Uh, and as we think about rec recruiting and retaining top talent, it is about the kind of things Soren just mentioned, having great problems to solve. And at Maersk, we are at perhaps uh, in the middle of an industry leading transformation. We have very, very complex problems to solve that require creative minds to come together. We also uh, t know that top talent wants a place where they can have an impact, they can, they can add value, they're empowered to do the kind of things th uh, they want to do. So we're building that culture. And uh, just within diversity, one of the things we're very focused on within technology is gender diversity. Uh, firstly, it allows us to tap a much larger workforce. And as you know, the war, f war for talent on technology is very strong. So we want to have as broad a, a talent base to go after, but also it makes better teams, better decision, decision making. So we're very focused on upping the game around uh, gender diversity within the tech organization.